The New York Giants just wrapped up their practice on Wednesday, and the injury report is out, and there are 14 names on it. It's got to be one of the lengthiest injury reports in the National Football League right now. We'll break down the injury report in a second. We've also got some new info on Daniel Jones and his neck injury. He spoke to the media. We'll get you those quotes. And also, Brian Dable kind of hinted at the idea that if Daniel Jones is going to be out for an extended period of time, he could go and sign a veteran quarterback. We'll talk about the player that I think it might be. And also, we've got an update on Lyle Collins and his visit and potentially signing with the New York Football Giants. Let's start with QB1, Daniel Jones. He said his goal is to play on Sunday night against the Buffalo Bills. He also said that the neck injury is not the same neck injury that he had in 2021 that ultimately ended his season. Dan Duggan of The Athletic got to talk to Jones today, and he said, quote, Daniel Jones said his neck feels a little bit sore. He said he has no concern about this being a long-term based injury on what the injury is and how they expect it to heal. He said it's different than the previous neck injury, but declined to provide specifics. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I don't think Daniel Jones is going to play this Sunday night against Buffalo. At the end of the day, you never want to mess around with a neck injury. And he said earlier in the week that one of his biggest concerns is pain tolerance and getting hit again. Look, if you have any chance to re-aggravate or make a neck injury worse, I don't care that the Giants season is on the line and they're staring one and five in the face. You cannot do that to a human being. If his neck is hurt, he should not play. And I don't think he's going to, which means Tyrod Taylor is going to be under center for this ball club. And he looked decent-ish, I guess you want to say. Um, I don't think he looked better than Daniel Jones when he came in for DJ in that fourth quarter against the Miami Dolphins this past Sunday. But I do think that Tyrod's kind of pocket mobility and pocket presence and pretty much his ability to run for his life a little bit better than Daniel Jones might help the Giants out. The Giants are better with Daniel Jones. Daniel Jones is a better quarterback than Tyrod Taylor, no doubt about it. But I will say, the pocket presence, the escapability, and the fact that he is going to be running for his life just like Jones is, and he's a little bit more athletic, I think may bode well for the Giants. I still think it's going to be an extremely tough game for them on Sunday night. They enter as 15-point underdogs. Ugh, it's going to be tough. Can they get to 2-4 and four on the season, or will they be 1-5 and five heading into Washington next week? I do know this, though. If we get any sort of update on Daniel Jones, whether he's playing, not playing, what he had for breakfast, whatever it is, we're going to get you guys a video on this channel as soon as possible. And I want to do this. I'm honestly going to blame some of the reason why the Giants aren't being all that, su that successful on you. You watching right there. If you want the Giants to beat the Buffalo Bills, subscribe to the channel. Sub for dubs. I never have wanted a dub more in my life. And do your job. Hit that sub button. Free Giants videos every single day. All right, let's dive into the injury report. Darren Waller was one of the guys that was featured, and he did not participate. And it is due to a groin injury that I guess popped up in Sunday's matchup. But he said he's going to be okay, and he will practice tomorrow. I'm expecting him to be able to go on Sunday against Buffalo. I think he's going to be targeted early and often, whether it's DJ or Tyrod under center. These are all of the players that did not practice for Big Blue, Daniel Jones obviously did not. Inside linebacker Micah McFadden is also out with an ankle injury. He hurt his ankle in practice last week, and he continues to be out. That is brutal. Aziz Ojolari, of course, he is on the injury report yet again. An extremely talented individual. An extremely good football player. But at the end of the day, you got to be available. Sometimes availability is the best ability, and he is never available, it seems like, and he's always on the injury report. Matt Parrott. Backup left tackle, who replaced Joshua Izudu last week after being benched, is hurt and did not practice because of shoulder injury. Wandale Robinson did not practice. I'm not too worried about Wandale. I feel like this is more of a rest thing for him. Just played his third game back, coming back from a torn ACL last year. Kind of load management, if you will. John Michael Schmitz continues not to practice. Same with Andrew Thomas. I don't think John Michael Schmitz or AT, number 78, all-pro left tackle Andrew Thomas, is going to practice. I think Andrew Thomas may be out for a couple more weeks, and that may be why the Giants signed an uh, uh, offensive tackle to the practice squad yesterday, and maybe why they're working out Lyle Collins. Players that were at least limited 
in practice on Wednesday. Deontay Banks, the rookie corner, has an ankle. He's going to play. Saquon Barkley was limited. And I actually think that Barkley, this is the closest he's ever been uh, to getting back to being on the football field and playing on Sunday. I give him a good shot to play. Uh, they could use him, especially if Tyrod's going to be under center. Gary Brightwell dealing with an ankle, as well as Cordell Flott, who actually played really well in the slot against the Miami Dolphins. Shane Lemieux and Marcus McKeithen, of course, two more linemen on the injury report for the Giants. I'm going to tell you guys about the quarterback. I think the Giants could sign if DJ is out for an extended period of time. And we'll get to Lyle Collins and what he is doing and if he's going to sign with Big Blue. But first, I got to tell you guys about our awesome sponsor, Game Time. If you're looking to buy tickets for the absolute best price guaranteed, I need you to download the Game Time app right now and use the promo code Giants Chat, all one word, and you are going to get $20 off. So download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the promo code Giants Chat and get $20 off. You shouldn't have to worry when you're buying tickets to your next big event. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. With killer last minute deals, all in prices, one of my favorite features, you get a view of the stadium or event or venue from your seat before you buy the ticket, and it's the best price guaranteed. Stress-free, best price guaranteed, and it's ex extremely easy to navigate the app. I've been to a couple of concerts over the past couple of months, and I was able to go on a pretty good deal thanks to game time. They've already got some tickets up for the Bills game this week. They've got some tickets up already for the game next week against Washington. Look, if you want to go to the game, do it with Game Time, the best ticketing app in the business. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code GIANTSCHAT for $20 off your first purchase. I'll put the details to how to get hooked up and get $20 off in the comments and description of today's show. All righty, let's talk about Lyle Collins, who is actually making a kind of workout tour, I guess you could kind of say, in New Jersey right now. He worked out for the New York Jets yesterday, and he is going to work out for the Giants today. Collins' workout is going to take place, or took place, whenever you're watching this, after the Giants wrapped up their practice on Wednesday. And the reason they want to work him out, because he's 10 months removed from tearing his ACL, MCL, and PCL. His knee was absolutely shredded. Um, but it sounds like, according to him, his camp and Adam Schefter, that he is ready to go, and he is going to make a decision on where he wants to play football for the remainder of the season very, very soon. And I think the Giants to do whatever it takes to sign Collins. Look, it can't hurt at this point. You already have the worst offensive line in the National Football League. Your offensive line, according to Pro Football Focus, has given up 100 quarterback pressures. We've played five games. That's 20 QB pressures a game. That's the most in the NFL. On top of that, you've given up 30 sacks this year. That's number one as well. It is the worst O-line in the NFL. Collins used to be a solid O-lineman. Played pretty well for the Cincinnati Bengals last year in 2022 prior to the injury. And if he's ready to go, if he's locked in, he's ready to play and healthy, he could absolutely help this O-line. We'll talk about another O-lineman and Justin Pugh in a second, but I do want to spend a little bit of time here on what Brian Dable said at his media availability today. A reporter asked him pretty much, are the Giants going to add another quarterback? And he pretty much said and hinted at um, that Daniel Jones is going to be out even maybe one week or any extended period of time, and Tyrod's under center, they may sign a veteran QB to back up Taylor. And the first guy that I thought of was Matt Barkley, uh, former USC quarterback, former pretty good college quarterback. Thing is, he has not been good in the NFL. The reason why, though, that I think it could be Barkley is he has a strong relationship with Brian Dable. He knows this offense because he played for three seasons with the Buffalo Bills when Dable was the offensive coordinator. So he can come in, be a vet, and just kind of be a guy that has, doesn't have to be brought up to speed all that quick. He already knows the game plan. He already knows the playbook. And I think that could bode well for any quarterback that they are trying to bring in right now if it is to back up Tyrod Taylor if Jones is out. When you look at what Barkley has done throughout his career, it's a whole lot of nothing except for throwing interceptions. He started seven games in the NFL. He, look, he completes less than 60% of his passes. And he has a one to two touchdown to interception ratio. Anytime that second number is higher than the first number, that's a problem. Guy's got 11 touchdowns in his career. 
and 22 interceptions. Not all that good, but a veteran QB, I'm not sure that they want to trust Tommy DeVito to be the emergency QB if Tyrod gets hurt. Maybe they sign Barkley and they activate three quarterbacks next week if Jones is out then as well. Let's close out the show talking about Justin Pugh, former first round pick by the Giants a long time ago. He's back with the Giants. If you didn't know, what are you doing? Subscribe to the channel. But Dan Duggan of The Athletics said this. Today was Justin Pugh's first practice in full pads. He took, he took reps with the scout team O-line today. He said his knee feels great, which he had surgery on in the offseason. But he said it will be important to gauge how he feels tomorrow. It's the first full padded practice he's had in over pretty much a, a, a year up at this point. And he said, if I can play, obviously I would love to do that. That's up to coach, the, str the training staff. It's not just me. As desperate as this offensive line is, we just told you the stats a second ago. It's not Lyle Collins, and it's not Justin Pugh. Neither are the savior. But Lord Almighty, I do think he will help because it cannot be worse than what the Giants have right now. I don't want to be mean to Joshua Zudu or Marcus McKeithen or Ben Bredesen or Mark Lewinsky or Evan Neal. But oh my goodness, they are just bad football players right now. And you could bring in a vet like Justin Pugh who maybe moves the needle a little bit, and then you bring in Lyle Collins, and that moves the needle a little bit. Um but I'm not sure that you could trot out the same O-line you had last week. I mean, at the end of the day, it, it injured your, your quarterback that you paid $160 million. So I do think he will help. Not sure if he's going to play this week. I think the following week against Washington could make more sense for both the Giants and Justin Pugh. As always, I just want to say thank you, and I appreciate you for tuning in to Giants Now by Chat Sports. Video number two of the day. That's why you subscribe. We do it better than anybody else. Appreciate you. We'll see you later. Have a good one. Thank you.